else? Tammy with Real Southern Woman. What else? It's Real Southern Woman today. I'm just being real, ain't I? I'm really tired. Um, Chris is out working in the garden and on the pool. Um, I don't know what I'd do without my husband. I love him so much. I'm going to cry. I love him so much. He is such a good man. He helps me with my mama. He helps me around my house. He helps me do everything. My daddy never did anything like that for my mama growing up. My daddy never helped her with her mother. I mean, he would always help her financially. But but anything else, no. Uh, he never went and run an errand. He never... I mean, Daddy just didn't do nothing, y'all. When I was growing up, I never seen my Daddy do anything. My mama, when we were growing up, I know I'm talking today, but this is just a talk day for me. Because I need to talk to y'all. When we were growing up, my mama laid out his clothes. She laid out his shoes. If the antenna for the TV needed to be turned so we could pick up a channel because we lived out in the country, she had to do it. Um... If he needed a spit can to spit in, she made it. Um, I never seen him do any housework in my whole entire life. I never seen him cook anything in my whole entire life. I did see him slice potato chips real thin with his pocket knife a couple of times because she never could do it right for him. Um, He'd say, bring me that potato and let me slice it with my pocket knife. I want them to be thin like potato chips. Oh, my God, if y'all just knew how I grew up. But Mama done everything for my daddy. And she looked at me last night and she said, uh -oh. I mean, she, Chris aggravates her because he stays on his phone when he's there most of the time. He's in it, you know, he's playing a game or whatever. But she looked at me when we were in the hospital last night. She said, Tammy, she said, your daddy never done anything like that for me, for my mama and daddy. And I said, I know, mama. But I was just telling y'all how much my mama notices, you know, what Chris does for me. And you can tell she, she really appreciates him. And it's sweet. Uh, and I sure appreciate him. Lord, if I ever pass away, there's going to be so many women after him. He won't, he won't be able to shake them off with a stick. <laughs> I used to tell him when I had cancer, uh, I had a woman picked out for him for when I died. Because I really thought I was going to die. Because my stage was such a late stage and it was such an aggressive cancer that my, my statistics, I should have been dead within like four years. Uh... And so at the time, I was trying to, you know, think about who would make a good wife for him and my kids because I have redheaded girls, and I'm telling you, it's hard to deal with a redheaded, if, you, if you've got anybody that's redheaded in your family, you know what I'm talking about. We are uh, headstrong, we are stubborn, we are opinionated. I've never met a redheaded person that wouldn't like that never in my life and so I was concerned that if I died and Chris married some brunette or blonde that they it would already be hard for them to relate with my girls because they would be you know young girls but I was thinking Lord he's got to marry another redhead so that they can get along with my kids so I actually had one that I was wanting him to marry if something happened to me he said, girl, you're crazy. I said, no, I'm not. He said, I am not going to do that. I said, well, I already got picked one out, one picked out for you, and you can at least go out with a date, on a date, and see what you think. But anyway, that was eight years ago. So God still got me here. So he still has to put up with me instead of somebody else. Uh, but anyway, he's out there working, and we're going to get a lot done today. And... Uh, Martha says, God has blessed you in so many ways. Yes, he has. I mean, I could just, it's amazing. I don't know why I'm crying today. I guess because um, I am blessed. I mean, how many people do you know that's, of course I'm disabled, but still, 
How many people do you know that's 49 and 53, 52 and can retire and spend some time together? Uh, I wish my body was a little bit better. I'm more like, even if I'm 49, they say cancer ages you 10 years, and I really believe it. So my body's more like a 59, and my mind sometimes, more like a 59-year-old. Uh, but we got a lot of time to spend together and have a good time, and it's really, really nice. Uh, I, if y'all just knew all the blessings, because I'll give you an example. I was working at that large architectural firm before I got cancer, and uh, I was really tired. I was doing really big projects. Most of the time, I did them all by myself uh, because being a redhead that I am, nobody could work good enough for me. And I'm just telling you, I'm being honest. Nobody could do a good enough job that I wanted them to work on my projects. I didn't like it if they couldn't. Uh, I didn't like it if I told them how to do something and they didn't get it the first time. So, uh, whenever they would try to get help for me, I was so fast and so efficient at drawing uh, and detailing that I couldn't handle uh, training somebody. I just couldn't. I was fast enough I could just do it myself before I tried to train somebody, which was not a benefit to the company because nobody trained under me until the very last year I was there. This little guy came in. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to remember his name. Sweetheart. He was the valedictorian of his college. I believe he went to Southern Polytechnic University. Well, finally, God sent me somebody that was smart enough to get it the first time. I was so blessed. I loved him so much. And, oh my gosh, I did train him. He was the only person I ever really trained because I made lists for him. Like, you know, when you do a project, what you're supposed to do first and second and third. And like a lot of people uh, with architecture, they'll, they'll draw a floor plan. And then, I'm not kidding. They'll about have the complete project done, details and all. I mean, cut sections and everything. And they haven't even dimensioned the floor plan. And then you go back and you dimension the floor plan. And it changes spacing between steel columns, you know, like for the structural engineer. It changes where plumbing goes. It changes all kind of stuff. And they're so goofy they don't do it first thing. Well, I made sure and made him a list of things, you know, he could do in a row so that he would get it right the first time. And he was really smart. Uh, anyway, I was doing about three projects before I got laid off and the recession hit. And they were large projects. And one of them was a $16 million project. And uh, I was doing, like I said, most of it by myself. And then uh, I believe his name was Andrew. I, I can't remember. I can't believe I can't remember his name. Anyway, um, he was helping me. But I got to the point I was exhausted. And I got to the point I was like, God, I really just don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. You know, I'm overrun, I'm tired, and I'm exhausted. And that was right before, that was also the year, uh, the year before that I had to, I'm just being honest and real, I had to put Mama in a um, drug rehab that year. you talking about under stress. Now, I was under stress. I had those projects to do. I had little kids, I had mama in a rehab that was a spend the night rehab, and it was just torture for me. Um, and so I got to the point where I was just like, God, you know, I'm tired of this. I, I don't know what I, what I can do. And y'all, sometimes I really believe this sounds stupid, but me and Chris had insurance through his work. We had a cancer policy. Um, and I really believe sometimes God does things, even cancer, for a reason. Because I was, I was physically and mentally exhausted. And I was at the point I wanted to quit. And I didn't have to. Uh, a recession hit. You know, I finished up the schools. They didn't have any schoolwork for years after I finished up my schools. I finished up three schools and I was laid off. I was laid off for about six months, got home. I mean, back then I was in good shape. I was skinny. I was 145 pounds. 
Um, I got home. I rearranged my whole house. I organized everything, got everything, all my ducks in a row, and then I wound up with cancer six months later. I mean, it was like God just laid it all out, you know. Uh, and not only that, but I had thought about getting a job. When I was in college, I worked at Kroger in the, in the bakery. And the girl that I worked with worked right down the street. We worked, we worked in Marietta on, off of Powers Ferry and Delp when I was young. But she worked right down the street from me at a brand new Kroger. And I had seriously thought about taking a job there. But I would have only gotten paid $9 an hour. Well, at CDH, I was getting probably $35 an hour. Well, y'all, God just worked everything out because when I got home, Chris went, Tammy, I don't want you working there. Um, he said, it's a lot of standing up and a lot of work for $9 an hour. And so I didn't take the job. Had I taken that job and I got cancer and and like I did, it was such a late stage to, to be approved for disability without even, I mean, I just did my paperwork and it was approved because of my stage. Um, had I taken that job, y'all, they would have made my disability check for the $9 an hour salary. It, it goes to your last job. But instead of the $9 an hour salary, it went to my $35 an hour salary. Now, that's a big deal. So it's like God just worked everything out. Not only that, we had cancer insurance. Uh, we paid off Chris's truck with the money we received for radiation on my chest. We got paid every single day I was radiated. We got paid in cash, and you don't have to pay taxes on that money, uh, about $17,000 for my cancer treatments. Now, when you have cancer, it's terrible to have to go in for treatment, but it sure is exciting that every time you go, you get paid several hundred dollars every day. That was exciting. So we paid off Chris's truck. I mean, God was good to us. Paid off Chris's truck with that. Um, then I was approved for disability like that. I just went in, talked to the woman, and uh, they did my paperwork in there and because my condition was spelled out in black and white as a disability because I had cancer in more than 10 lymph nodes. So any of y'all that has had cancer in more than 10 lymph nodes, I applied for disability, and I really thought I was going to die. Um, so I was approved, and, and then because I've had so many surgeries and so many residual effects, I've continued on my disability. And it's been a blessing. I'm telling you, God... And our life has really showed out. And uh, even through everything we went through, it was easy because he made it easy for us. And Chris had thought about retiring in 25 years because of the cancer, because he really thought I was going to die too. But we decided to let him go ahead and work 30 years, and I'm glad he did because I'm still here. But it's a blessing that we could be here together this young even if I do have a lot of physical ailments, and be able to enjoy life together at such a young age and him be retired. Now, we will be rich. Absolutely not. Uh, when you've got kids, little kids, you can draw disability on those two. Like, I draw, draw on myself and my two children. But as soon as they turn, I believe it's 17 or 18, they'll drop it. Even if they're in college, they just drop it. Um, but it was such a blessing to us to have that. Um, oh my gosh, the list goes on and on. I could just tell you all kinds of stories. But uh, how many people do you know that could have cancer and have that many blessings at the same time? Um, I mean, a lot of people can't even hardly pay their copays, And we didn't even have a copay. Um, now we did, for several years after my cancer, we did y'all pay about twelve to thirteen thousand dollars in medical be medical bills every year but because of the disability we were able to do that um and if we hadn't have had it i don't know what we'd have done so anyway i just thought i'd bring that up i've been talking to y'all forever this morning but um chris has already come back in he's eating his snack was that on the list Any plan on putting anything down the no 
Amy, turn off my pintos. Lord, I'm about to burn my pintos. I had them on the lowest setting. Do they have water in them? They do? Okay. Um, Chris is eating his nut snack. So I guess I, it's time for me to eat my nut snack. I'll do another menu and post it. I don't know if any of y'all went by the menu this week at all, but um, I think I've lost a couple of pounds already. Two or three pounds. Something like that. And that's all I want to lose. I don't want to go on one of these drastic diets where you lose 20 pounds in, in a month. I mean, that's crazy. Um, it's not good for your body. Um, it wouldn't be good for my arthritis and my anti-inflammatory diseases and all that crap. I want to do it right, do it healthy. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed day. And maybe y'all will see me on CBC today. Um, I hope so. It was good talking to all y'all. Thanks for listening to me uh, babble today. Love ya. Bye.